Hi, welcome back to my channel, So Very Domestic. I'm May and I post videos about cooking, baking, cleaning, and homeschooling. Today's video is a cooking video. Five sides. Strengthening our introductions. Sprouts haul from Prime Now. Trader Joe's haul. Today I'm going to show you how to make nine freezer meals in about three and a half hours. I'm going to put the full recipes for each of these meals in the description. The description box does have a word limit so I can't put all the recipes and all the instructions for all the recipes in there but I will put all the ingredients and I will list how much I paid um, for these ingredients and then my grand total I'll put in the title um, and in the description box. Today is easily my most ambitious freezer meal making day. I want to do seven today. I want to do spaghetti and meatballs, chili, salmon packets, two trays of pierogies, which I guess means eight, broccoli beef, chicken pot pie, and chicken pocket filling. The ground beef for the chili is over here. To this ground beef, I have added um, about two tablespoons of granulated garlic. I've added a little tiny bit of um, uh, minced onion. I also added a little bit of chili powder, some cayenne pepper, um, salt, black pepper, and some paprika. Um, over here to the ground beef that's going in, oh, I'm sorry, and that's about two pounds of ground beef. Also about two pounds of ground beef. This is for spaghetti sauce. I added maybe three tablespoons of garlic, um, about a quarter of an onion minced. What else? I put in salt and pepper, of course. And then I also put basil, oregano, and rosemary, and a little bit of thyme. Over here is my ground beef mixture for my meatballs. Uh, I'm about to roll those up. This is about a pound of ground beef. Also basil, thyme, oregano, and rosemary. Also salt and pepper. I also added one egg and I don't know how much breadcrumbs. I guess about a quarter cup, technically, maybe half a cup. But really I just pour while it's mixing until it kind of comes together. I'm gonna roll these up in just a second, but first I'm just gonna get the sauces going. The thing about both chili and spaghetti sauce is you have to let them cook forever. Um, in this case, you don't really because these flavors will marry in the freezer as well. And then again, when you're cooking them the day that you're cooking them. So really, it's just about assembly at this point. So the chili is one big can of um, crushed tomatoes. We've also got black beans, chili beans, drained black beans, chili beans with the sauce, uh, diced tomatoes with their sauce, and drained kidney beans. For the spaghetti sauce, I do a can of crushed tomatoes, and then this little can of tomato paste, I empty this into the, like I empty the, the contents of this into the pot, then I scrape the contents of this in here and fill it with water, and then mix that up and put that in the pot, and then I literally just add in all the same seasonings that are already in uh, both ground beef mixtures. And then while those sauces are cooking, I will roll out and cook the meatballs. Okay, so the meatballs are about to go into the oven. I got 24 meatballs out of that recipe. This is about to go in there. This is about to go in there. Oh, and also to the spaghetti sauce, I forgot to mention, I do put a can of diced tomatoes as well. So there's a can of diced tomatoes in here and a can of diced tomatoes in there. Oh, meatballs are, can you see them? There we go. Okay, so meatballs are just about done. It's been maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes since I threw them in. I actually ended up with two trays of spaghetti sauce and two trays of chili. And this is something worth noting that I don't know if other people deal with or not, but this is about as, this is exactly my spaghetti sauce recipe every week. Every Meatball Monday, this is the sauce that I make. And I bet you that we probably eat, I don't know, three quarters of it and then the other quarter is wasted. It'll go in the fridge for leftovers, but nobody really eats it. And the other thing about using three quarters of it is maybe we don't need to go back for seconds. Do you know what I mean? So like the amount that I make, when you look at it like this, plus this does not include the spaghetti that I'm about to make, and it doesn't include the meatballs that you know you saw in the um, oven. I have, 12 meat I have 24 meatballs in the oven. So if I put 12 in this tray and 12 in that tray, 
and then wrap them up and then make two batches of spaghetti and put those in gallon bags and stick those in the freezer. That's actually two meatball Mondays that I've done and I haven't really gypped us at all by doing that. Um, I'm just not throwing away the extra. You know what I mean? Same goes for chili. And this I actually did add another can of crushed tomatoes to after I realized what was happening over here. I thought like, okay, what's it going to take to make this be two meals? Um, and it turns out the answer is one can of crushed tomatoes. Now at this point, what I'll do is just take these out and toss them in here. I was going to freeze them separately, but I thought if I freeze them this way and kind of like roll them into it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops. Eight. It's kind of awkward to do it like this, but nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Um, and now if I just like mix all that up, so they're like in there, I'll freeze in with it and all the flavors will marry together. And then when you take it out and cook it again, the flavors will combine even more so. So that's what I'm going to do this time around. In here, I have um, peeled, washed, and chopped nine potatoes. We're looking at about... I guess around four pounds or so. Um, more than half of that is going to go into a double batch of pierogies and the rest of it is going to go into chicken pot pie that I'm about to start just like my kitchen's almost finished being tidied. Whoop. Those dishes on the the dishes on the left are clean but I still have to dry them and put them away. So I cannot possibly stress to you the importance of cleaning up in between when you're doing a project like this. I have now been in the kitchen working for about, about an hour and 20 minutes. My potatoes are done. I'm just about to drain them. And then over here, I've got my spaghetti happening. So that's happening and that's gonna mix for a while. So I'm doing my broccoli beef right now. The broccoli beef is such a cheater, it's barely even a recipe. You just either make your own teriyaki sauce, which is, you know, soy sauce, brown sugar, um, garlic, like whatever else you want to put into it, but your base there is soy sauce and uh, brown sugar, or just use pre-made teriyaki sauce, whatever. And then you just kind of saute your beef strips in the teriyaki sauce, and then you add about, um, I don't know. I'll add this whole thing of broccoli. So how much is this? You're looking at about three cups. I'll add three cups of broccoli to it. Um, and then you just cook it for like the teeniest bit of time and then you're done because then it goes on a bed of rice. I would not make rice and freeze it just because I have a rice cooker um, and it comes together so quickly that I'm not really concerned about the time it will take to do that. I suppose you could make and freeze rice, um, but because I have the rice steamer, I'm not really worried about that. Um, yeah, so this will be ready in like, I don't know, 15 minutes. You don't have to cook uh, the broccoli all the way down. You don't even really have to cook the beef all the way down because you are cook you are um, freezing it and then cooking it again, right? I'm just going to make sure this is all pretty much cooked before I add the broccoli. Um, and then you can also add some bean sprouts on top when um, you're reheating it. I wouldn't add them now because you'd want them to stay crunchy and I wouldn't want them to get mushy. So that's that. So I'm gonna drain these potatoes, reserve what I need for um, my chicken pot pie, and then mash up the rest of it for my pierogi filling. And then as soon as this is done, and it's almost done, I'm going to take it out and then make my pierogi dough and let them both rest before I put them through the pasta machine. Okay, so over there in that bag is the um, dough for the spaghetti. And then over here in the mixer is the dough for the pierogies. Um, here are the potatoes for both the chicken pot pie and the pierogies. And then here is um, the broccoli beef. Okay, so now I'm working on chicken. Um, the pan in the back is for chicken pot pie. And the spices that I used in there are, um, there's onion powder, black pepper, parsley, celery seed, uh, basil, a crushed bay leaf, majorum, oregano, savory, thyme, a teeny bit of cayenne pepper, coriander, a little bit of cumin, some dry mustard, uh, rosemary, garlic, some dehydrated carrot, um, and some lemon juice powder. So that's back there, that's for my pie. And then up here, this is the chicken pocket um, filling. And the spices that I used in here are poultry seasoning, 
bay, rosemary, sage, majorum, thyme, and oregano. So now I'm going to do like a little bechamel sauce with tiny uh, pieces of, of um, I was going to say marshmallow, <laughs> with tiny pieces of mushroom, uh, and then that's it. So this just goes with that bechamel and that's it. And then I'll probably even freeze that, like I'll let it cool and then I'll freeze it in a gallon bag. Um, and then I'll serve that on top of rice with a side salad. And then this, I'm gonna make a roux um, and then I'll make a chicken, like a basic chicken gravy. Um, and then I'll mix this chicken up with these potatoes because the rest are in my, um, pierogi filling and some frozen peas and carrots and then we're gonna not bake that. I'm gonna put the raw pie dough um, in the freezer. This is a favorite of my oldest. I mentioned at the top of the video that I used to make this as like a pocket. I was copying like the lean cuisine um, chicken pocket and he would like break it open and not really eat the dough. And then I was working you know so much harder to make this dough and then he wasn't even eating it so um then i made it without the dough and everybody loved it so now i make it without the dough so i'm literally just gonna i'm gonna let this cool off and then i'm just gonna freeze it in a gallon bag flat um and that way i can just um like rip it open and put it like back right in this pan if i want or whatever um and then make some rice and put it on rice with like a caesar or a garden salad okay so now the pie is almost ready too um I originally dumped it into that pan just to scrape out all the flavor. Yep, Daphne's pointing for me. And uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make sure this is all incorporated. I'll probably season it a little bit more and then I'll dump it into my pie crust and then make it like cute and put it in the freezer. It just perfectly fits. Now I'm just gonna roll the crust on top of it, maybe cut a star out of it and then stick it in the freezer. There we go. So now I'm just going to wrap the top of it in tin foil and put it in the freezer. Okay, I feel guilty even calling this a recipe because it's barely a recipe. It's a gallon bag with um, a frozen salmon. That's a, like a wild Alaskan salmon. It's frozen, it cut into four pieces, green beans and teriyaki sauce, and that's it. You can either take this out, throw it onto a sheet pan, stick it in the oven and put some rice on, or you can dump this bag into your slow cooker when you're ready to have it and put rice on. I'm gonna do that twice. So this actually gives me two dinners. I thought I only had enough for one, so surprise, I have enough for two. I've never actually hung my spaghetti to dry. Usually, um, I have it sitting on this dryer for maybe not even 10 minutes, and then I just throw it into the water while it's still kind of wet, um, and then it cooks up really quickly. This is drying, I mean, pretty well. You obviously can't see how wet or dry it is, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm just letting this dry for like, I'll give it half an hour or so, and then I'll put it in two separate gallon bags and freeze it. Um, this is two batches of spaghetti. Okay, so I'm completely done. I did not include the pierogies in this because I did pierogies in my last video. Um, so I'm gonna try to cut out references to them um, just to try to make this be like as accurate as possible for this. So I have nine dinners completed for my family. I've got chili, chili, chicken pie, um, teriyaki salmon with green beans, times two. I've got the um, chicken pocket filling and spaghetti meatballs and spaghetti sauce times two and broccoli beef. So I've never frozen my fresh spaghetti before. We'll see how that goes. I've read about it online and apparently it works out without an issue. Chili, I'll probably just make cornbread. Um, and again, cornbread, chicken pie, I'll make a salad. Spaghetti and meatballs, I'll probably just do bread. Um, this I'll need rice and a salad. This I'll need rice, maybe a salad, but rice for sure. Broccoli beef will also go with rice or noodles, depending on what's going on. But that's nine meals. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna run the math on exactly what it costs to do this. Um, and I'll also include a couple of shortcuts for people who would rather do that. Um, I made a bechamel sauce for this. Um, but you can easily just use a can of mushroom soup. And I also used um, 
like a roux to make the gravy for this chicken pie. But again, you can just use like a packet of gravy or canned gravy or whatever. So I will do the math on um, those shortcuts and then let you know exactly how much it costs to make these nine meals. I can tell you that it took me about about four hours to do all of this, but I was interrupted a couple of times. Once to call my dad to ask him a question, and I talked to him for about 20 minutes, um, and then once to help my husband with something, I ended up getting pulled away for like another 15 minutes or so. So probably more like three and a half hours-ish to accomplish um, these nine meals. So thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, that you try out some of these meals. If you do enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up so I know. And if you try out some of these recipes, let me know in the comments which ones you tried out, if they worked out for you, if you like them, if you do them again. And subscribe to my channel for more freezer meal updates. Thanks. Bye.